Ready? Um, so, today we will start to do some treatment planning with um, Nadrat Hans. Um, Peter is also there. Um, we are already getting questions. Um, as the first one, I think um, you should work on these, um, um, creating these plans with us. So we will do it and you can follow along. Um, so basically that in the session afterwards, um, some uh, results can be presented. Um, but you you are free to to work um, to to try something out after the um, two hours that that we spent now on that, and and check out a little bit more, um, and just just for your your own fun or let's say it like that. And yeah, the second question I think that should have been clear um, yesterday. Um, the standalone version is sufficient for taking part, you cannot do everything that we will show here, um, but it will not largely influence um, the results that you generate. It's, it, it will provide additional information and additional insight into to, um, um, how the system works behind the scenes. Um, and um, so I think yesterday I, I multiple times mentioned like kind of something like 75% um, that you can do when you're using the standalone um, and the remaining 25% will be some insights uh, gathered by looking at the code and, and, and working with the command window. Um, so don't worry if you have installed the standalone, that's enough to, to generate um, results. Okay, so yesterday, um, I think everybody. Oh, let's or oh, let's let's um, let's look at something else um, um, before we start the planning. So let me share my screen. So when you look at the um, timetable of the masterclass, what you see now. I uploaded 15 minutes ago um, a PDF here for the session that you can click on and open. Okay, let me check out the check. Okay, there's a Google Drive link. Um, so this PDF contains a handout. So I will do all the steps that are in these handouts, but it's maybe nice to have it like on the screen or something in the background. So that's why I uploaded it um, now before so that you can um, follow along. Um, so um, the handout looks like this and it has all the tasks that we are trying to, to go through now during this um, two hours. Okay, so yes, I just moved this out and we'll say some, uh, some, some things. So what we're going to do today is um, to look at, or let me move the handout back in, at the basic principles of, 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 of treatment planning. So we take the first steps going from very simple examples to a patient case and we focus on the differences between um, um, photons and protons, as I already like um, like stringed along uh, this morning, um, focusing on on both of these. So, so because I think to understand why um, proton and ion therapy is is becoming so popular, it's always good to have the comparisons to photons. Um, to see how different the plans look like and so on and how maybe how different it feels in a sense to, to do those um, plans. Also, I want to remind you that, that the planning that we do is, is basically um, um, simplistic planning. Um, I said this, this um, um, morning during the lecture that 
state of the art treatment planning methods can become insanely complex, can involve the selection of beam landing angles automatically, can involve um, uh, numerous techniques that look quite different from what also we do. So, so, um, um, but still, I think it's the, the most natural and basic approach to treatment planning. And I think it's a good, um, good um, setting for, for such um, um, a, a summer school because we do not want to kind of, our job is not to um, um, basically make you treatment planners. Our job is to let you understand um, um, how it works and, and in, at the core, I would say. Okay, and basically what we're going to do, we will first start off with um, photon treatment plants, um, like very simple ones, then do very simple proton treatment plans, and then go to a real patient and try to fulfill some prescriptions that we that we that we work with. Um, so yesterday we basically already told you how to get Matra to run either as the standalone or um, the the um, or from the code. So during the practical, I will work always with the MATLAB environment from the code. I will always announce when I now do something that is not possible in the standalone. So then basically the people that work with the standalone can take their hands up and, and uh, chill for a few seconds. Um, you don't have to do everything that I do. So when I basically switch to the environment, type some commands, it might also be just to show you something. You can try it out yourself. You can look at the same things, but you do not have to follow everything um, um, and copy everything that I do. Like all the stuff that I do in the environment is, is more informative. Um, it allows you maybe to, 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 to get some twist or, or, or change your result a little bit but it usually is there to get some insight into what is going on behind the scenes. Okay, like again, something in the chat. Um, the command same in Octave, yes, but as I said yesterday, if you try to do it with Octave, you will not be able to follow because the user interface is not working in Octave. It's just not functioning. Um, so if you do it with Octave, you can basically not work from the interface. And at the moment I cannot, like basically that's not possible for me. Of course you could do everything that we do in the interface. You can also do from script, but this is more complex and, and that's just not manageable in, in, in the time. So, um, but in principle, Matrat can completely run from Octave just the display like the user interface is not there. If you start it, you will get an error because Octave does not support the user interface. Um, so so uh, that will be a major issue when you try to participate. Um, okay. So, I mean, still you can try to, um, to, to, to use the matlab.m script and run it in Octave and change the beam angles and so on there. Um, and I see like a lot of comments now um, that I already answered, so I will not go into them. I basically got one um, where to get the software. I am still a beginner. This was basically covered yesterday and I cannot cover it again now because we only have two hours and I need to basically go on with the things. So. Um, um, there are some installation instructions here on the, um, on the, um, no, this is wrong. This is basically the link. You can download it, but I cannot know. But if you go into to the site of the summer school, you can find the installation instructions and you can do it. And um, yes, Hans-Peter, maybe you just go in the chat and answer all these questions when they, when they repeat themselves. So um, I can, exactly, yes. I can get going. Um, okay, so basically for all of those who followed yesterday and have Matrat installed and, and can now start working with Matrat, um, basically for me, it's opening the MATLAB environment and going to the code. So that's basically for those who have MATLAB, in, MATLAB installed and downloaded the code. Um, for all the other ones, you start the software. So basically, um, 
you can start the software from where the application is by clicking the executable. Um, Hans-Peter showed you yesterday how it works on Mac. So also if you have questions, do not write me direct messages because um, I, um, I will basically go on with the tutorial, write the direct messages to Hans-Peter. Um, and uh, yes, about yesterday's session, you can also find a recording if you need more installation instructions, but um, doing it now is, is probably a little um, 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 ambitious, um, but still you might be able to install it quickly and follow maybe the second half of the um, tutorial. Okay, so 10 minutes um, over and I think we should start. So basically, um, the woes that, uh, for those of you who started it from the standalone, um, um, you should already have the user interface open. For all others, you go to the Matrat code and you already know the best thing is to start um, typing Matrat GUI into the comment window. Alternatively, you can open the file related to this Matrat GUI.m and it will open the editor, which gives you a file where you can just click on run um, in, in MATLAB. So, and yes. So I will do it from the command window and will start the user interface. And basically it will take a while and then should launch the MATRAD user interface. So yesterday we already basically loaded the patient, clicked to some stuff and then some plan came out. We didn't understand what was going on and, and so on, but everything worked. Um, now we are like thinking a little bit more about what this user interface um, um, gives us. So this user interface gives us multiple widgets here. Um, they are all kept quite raw, I usually say, because commercial systems are much more secure and much more closed off. So there's a lot more uh, buttons and, and intermediate steps you need to go through that kind of safeguards you against making wrong inputs and not triggering errors and so on. This is kind of a quite raw system, um, um, which, which may be a little bit confusing if you already worked with commercial systems or, or also if you are new to this, of course. Um, so basically we have a workflow widget, which allows you to trigger certain um, workflow steps. So in the background, this calls MATRAT functions that we will also um, check out a bit later um, for those who don't use the standalone version. So basically what you can do is load data. So you see two things, load DICOM and import from binary. That's not that you won't use these ones during these practicals, because we will work with um, with the data that is provided with MATRAT and this is provided as MAT data. I showed you yesterday where this data is and we will soon load something. You have the workflow steps. Okay, Hans-Peter, there's again a question. Um, um, this is about the, the MAT files um, where I showed yesterday where they are, so they should be there. Um, okay, but we will see later again. And um, here basically are other workflow steps like calculating the dose. I quickly mentioned this this morning. Um, the optimization I talked a little bit longer this morning and some other steps that concern export and saving um, 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 data. And this buttons and here basically the export that will relate to what you submit later as results. Um, don't think about the result submission about like we will quantitatively um, 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 grade them or something like this. No, it's just a collection of your results. So you put them all into a document and just submit them. Um, and uh, we will go through how you basically can create an image and you cannot even export everything that, that you do. Um, so, um, that's just so that you may have something to discuss um, in the end. Okay, so the second widget is the plan widget, which basically allows you to set plan parameters. I think um, we will go, go into detail when we set them um, because now they don't really um, are too obvious. 
here in this objective and constraints, you will later piece together your planning problem. That's also something I mentioned this um, morning. And then there are some visualization things like choosing, choosing the plane. Um, this is basically accompanied by this viewer options here on the right side, which, which basically allows you to choose um, color scaling and so on. Um, and, 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 and some other stuff. But to learn this better, I think we start with the first step from the, um, from the workflow, which basically says load um, MUD data. So the load MUD data, that's basically the binary patient data um, that comes with the, um, with the uh, standalone and the MATLAB code. So when you load from the MATLAB code, so I will do this now here, I'm always consider I'm working with the code. So some things for me are different than for the standalone users. It's basically um, in the phantoms folder within the code. So if you click on this, there you find the MAT files that contain um, the, the, um, the basically the TG, 119 prostate, liver, head and neck and box phantom case. So the TG119 um, is basically what we will start with. This is the C-shaped phantom. I spent quite some time on this um, this morning. So when we, lo when we load this, um, it should show up in the um, user interface. Just really quickly um, as a reminder for the um, 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 for the standalone users. So basically the phantoms are usually in the folder where you install the standalone. It should be the up-to-date standalone like we yesterday did. And then there should be a phantoms folder in there. Like for example, I installed in program files Mudrat and I have like basically the application folder here. And within this application folder, there's a phantoms folder and you find all the phantoms. Um, okay. If these phantoms are for some reason not there with the standalone, I think Hans-Peter could also um, give you the link to the file on GitHub directly or something like this, so you can download it on the fly. Um, but they should be there with the installation. Um, Otherwise, something during the installation went wrong. Okay. And, and for the Mac installations, um, it's very similar. It's under applications, Matrat, and then applications, phantoms. So everything is basically in the installation folder. There is a subfolder called phantoms, and it's the place where you find the patient data. Yes. OK, so that's the first step. Um, so basically, the first step of the uh, handout already um, um, was accomplished successfully. And now we can uh, choose a little, take a little bit closer look on the stuff that just came active. Um, so for example, here, this is um, um, to, to change the options for what is displayed. So for example, I can choose different presets for, oh, I hope it works. Did I now break something? Apparently I broke something. Ah, yes, now it works again. So basically, these are presets for um, for certain windows. So just like changing the color map um, to to uh, to show different kind of settings for for different um, patient sites. But you can just leave the standard. So I now choose full, and it basically just changes these parameters on the display window here. And you can also choose different color maps, which uh, might be cool, uh -huh. um, but uh, yeah, this is like one of the most sensible color maps um, that you can use for looking at a CT because um, bones become white and that's that's a nice thing and air becomes black. I think that's, uh, and, and soft tissue is somehow gray. So this, this makes somewhat sense for this phantom, which is a wa water box, um, which is delineated as a, um, kind of a violet, you would probably say, um, um, contour, which you could turn on or off here. 
um, in the structure visibility, which gives you the names for these structures with their colors. So you have additionally this core structure which mimics an organ at risk and the target structure, which is this yellow thing. So you can also trigger this contours, may turn them on or off um, completely, which is sometimes good when you look at the dose. Um, this cross in the middle here gives you the isocenter of the plan. So you can also turn this off and the isocenter of the plan, um, which does not yet really exist, um, is basically the center of rotation um, you assume um, for your gantry. Like if you think about a gantry, it is basically just some reference point um, um, in a sense uh, for your planning system that also the machine in a sense understands um, as its reference point. So when I trigger additionally this visualize plan beams button, I see which gantry angles are currently set and you now you see there's a zero degree angle and it falls in directly into the ISO center. Okay, where does the zero degree angle come from? It comes from these plan parameters widget and you see at the moment, this is just some default settings that are initially created. When, uh, when you um, load data into, into MATRAD. So basically it gives you a zero degree gantry angle, a zero degree couch angle, it sets the radiation mode to photons, sets the machine to generic, and please do not play around with the machine. There should be no other option except for generic MC square, um, but really stick with this generic thing. These are the machines that do not need machine configuration and so on. And, everything should work when we choose these machines. Like always stick with the generic one. Um, because we do not use actual machine data because using actual machine data, you know, people are not too happy about um, giving out the details of their machine so that you can reconstruct um, everything their machine does. So this is really just generic data. Um, what you also do not usually do not need to touch is the ISO center because it we compute it just automatically for our purposes. So MATRAD will determine the center of mass of the target and compute the ISO center. So in principle, you can also choose this and move this around, but um, we won't go into that, what, what in which situations that makes sense. Um, in principle, this is determined just by ge geometry and it's like for, for our purposes rather un and not interesting where it exactly is. It should be somehow in the target and then that's good. Um, um, and the last parameter is the number of fractions. So in how many repeated fractions does the patient come um, um, to the treatment? And this is kind of important. We will stick to it with 30. I don't think we will change it um, just to keep um, biological dose calculation in two days consistent and so on. So. Basically 30 is kind of a normal number for fractions, but there might be situations in, in which you choose less, in which you choose more, or combined treatments in which you have 20 photon fractions and 10 proton fractions. I don't know. Um, there's like, this parameter is, is an art in itself together with the description, but we also won't go into that. So we will keep this at 30, but at the same time, you have to keep in mind that our prescription will always consider the total treatment, like the total dose accumulated over all fractions, um, while um, the dose MATRAD computes is per fraction. This has some, let's say, this has several reasons. The reason is that we are kind of used to prescribing total doses um, um, and encode the fraction number in the total dose prescription and so on. But biological dose computation um, um, makes most sense on a fraction basis. And so this is like that you always will have to do some, some, some math um, um, there. So if you prescribe 50 grade to the target, it will get divided by 30 in your analysis. And then you have to figure that out and basically use your calculator or try to do it in your head. Um, so, but just um, you realize this. So these are the plan parameters. There are some other parameters here which are purely photon specific and you don't need to touch them, just the sequencing button will become interested in one workflow step, interesting in one workflow step. Okay, here we basically have our optimization problem and this is now what we will 
start with. So basically that's a visual representation of the objective functions I piece together to optimize my plan. Um, what you see here, you see basically it repeats um, the, the structures that are listed here, but gives them additional parameters, namely what type of volume is it? So you see core is an OAR, an organ at risk that needs to be avoided. The body is also counted as an OAR, despite it not being a specific organ, but it's the whole contour, but it also needs to be avoided. That's why it's classified as OAR here. And the outer target is a target. Um, and, and this basically is mainly used for the computation of isocenters, for example. Um, the prescription you give by choosing these functions, um, which you basically also saw this morning um, listed quickly on a summary. Um, and we will start with like these functions that compute squared deviations or only positive squared deviations, only negative squared deviations. Um, basically with this very simple planning problem that I showed you, which is kind of a least squares problem. Um, um, so um, this should basically, um, um, let me think what would you wanted to say? Because sometimes I look in the chat and then I'm getting sidetracked. Um, so the, the parameter subsection doesn't show up under the objectives. It should show up when you load the, the MAT data. If it doesn't load, the only reason I could think about is that your MATLAB version is so old that it doesn't support something. Um, if it's a 2014 or 13 or 2007, I don't know, you might run into troubles. Um, but uh, that's the only reason I can think of. Um, but after loaded data, it should appear. Okay. So that's um, so Hans Peter, you can try to to fix stuff, and I will just continue with the stuff. Um, Um, I will answer this one more question. You must have the image processing tool installed. No, you don't need it. You only need it if you want to import your own DICOM. Like importing your own DICOM might also lead to not having parameters here because then you need to define all of them yourself. Um, okay, but this is basically what comes with the MAT file for now and um, is a good starting point. So it's pieced together of only squared deviation. Okay, so you have um, squared deviation, um, which is means basically least square. So you sum all squared deviations of a prescribed dose level. This is given here. Here it's listed as 50. So basically the optimizer during optimization would look at each voxel, look at the dose in each voxel, look at the difference to the prescription dose. So namely, if it's like 55, um, 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 gray, for example, in a voxel, um, it will then sum, like take the difference, 55 minus, minus 50, we'll see, okay, the difference is five, we'll square it, and this is the contribution to the objective function of this, um, 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 this, um, this voxel. Okay, so what, um, the squared overdosing only looks at positive differences, for example. It's quite useful for organs at risk because um, you do not want to also pull doses up. If the dose is low, it's good. So you only look at positive differences from 30. So if the dose in a voxel is larger at 35, you evaluate the five squared. If it's lower than 30, the contribution is zero. So basically that's a slightly modified least squares problem you see here. You see these penalty factors. So you assign a weight of thousand to this objective. So covering the target is very important. Um, sparing the OAR, the core is the second important and sparing the body is the least important. Okay, so this is what this means. So I see we have one or two times a problem with loading these objectives. If it, this doesn't work, then just follow what we are doing. 
Um, I think the reason of finding out why exactly this doesn't work with your particular system might be quite difficult, even for Hans Peter, but he has some ideas. Um, okay, so that's just basically the start. And if you look at the second task here, sorry, here, um, where it says choose the following objectives or similar, you see that this is basically exactly the setup that I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm showing here. You can modify it a little bit. So for example, some, someone who wants uh, less calculation do later just makes like, can change this to 60 because 60 divided by 30 later will just be two and this is quite easy. I will leave it with 50 just to get the additional uh, uh, mathematical um, exercise for my brain, which is not really a mathematical exercise anymore because I know it now. Um, and and, and uh, so I just keep the default settings. So there's already a good question what the P parameter is and Hans-Peter an uh, answers it. That's the penalty, it's the penalization. How strong do you put focus on this objective? We will play around with this later and that will show you what it means. In principle, this just basically puts focus on doing something that is more important um, on, or, focus, or puts focus in the optimizer on this particular organ. So for example, now the target has the highest priority is that it's optimization penalty. Um, so you could say it's for example, 10 times as important as sparing the rest of the healthy tissue. Because you could argue that covering the target is much more important than sparing the rest because when you don't cover the target, you don't treat the cancer and then your radiation treatment may, may not make sense. Um, that's, uh, yeah, you can call it a weight um, also. If you say weight at least squares, it's kind of the weight of the objective. We will change these later and see how these, um, these, these change your result. Okay, but, um, to, so, so as a first step to just see something happening, um, we will now basically either keep the settings or modify them a little bit. Um, we will start with one Gendry angles of photons. So we keep all the settings. What you can do, you can change the angle here. Um, I don't really mind um, the Gendry angle. The Gendry angle basically just gives you here the, the angle of impact of your beam, I will stick with zero. Um, and basically we, we, we recreate, uh, we try the what we learned this morning impossible. We try to eradicate this patient um, in, um, in, in, um, with one photon beam. And just to get like the system up and running. Um, so, what we do is that we click this button, calculate inference, influence matrix. So now basically, Madrat will perform the dose calculation and nothing will happen. So, okay, what happened now? As you remembered from this morning, well, if you, as you heard this morning, basically what we do is that we calculate this matrix um, that basically relates these individual beam elements, the beamlets, to to the dose they create in the in, in, in specific voxels. And now I will quickly go to the code, to the MATLAB environment, to the MATLAB environment, to show you that this matrix really exists and that you can explore it. So basically, what we can um, what we can do, oh, I, I see I triggered an error. That's quite interesting. Don't know what happened here, but the rest worked. Um, so basically what you see that there are existing some structures in the, this, this is not working with a standalone. That's only for the code users that Matra generated certain structures. So basically I showed you the CT here, the CT I showed you yesterday, it contains the CT information. So for example, you have the cube, the cube is like in this one, in this array here, and it has like some dimensionality, which is also listed here. You have the CST, which give you the structures. So you see something about the structures here, they are listed, um, some parameters here. The optimization is actually encoded here. 
So you have to click a little bit. Structure might be a little bit weird, but here exists all of this that you see in the user interface is stored in these variables. But that's not the interesting variables. The most interesting variable that we created right now or the variables are the STF and the DIJ. So the STF encodes basically beam geometry. So it shows you what geometry you just created. And it shows you to create a gantry angle of zero degree, a couch angle of zero degree. It shows you where the isocenter is. And it shows you basically geometrically how many beamlets you have generated for this photon beam. So here you have created 100, uh, 313 beamlets for one photon beam. So basically when you check them out, you see it's like here, this is quite fast. So it's, it's, it's really just to, to inform you a little bit. So you see there are 313 entries of geometry. So it gives you where does it point to um, um, and some additional information, the energy is six which means um, the maximum energy of the photon spectrum is six MeV. It's a six megavolt beam. So the photon spectrum, you know, it, you, you probably know it, it, it looks kind of like, like this. It's a typical Röntgen spectrum, an X-ray spectrum, but that's the beam geometry. And additional to the beam geometry, for each of these 313 beamlets, we now computed those. And this dose is stored here in the thing that we call DIJ. DIJ because D is the dose matrix and IJ index voxels and, and, and beamlets. So the first thing that we see here is some resolution information. So what resolution, for example, has the dose grid? It's three millimeters big. You can change this in the background, but we won't touch this. Um, in the, and you see basically repeated this information of having 313 pixels, we call the beamlets pixels, that is historically DKFZ slang, um, but it's good to know that pixels are beamlets. And the most interesting thing is this physical dose here, which creates a matrix. And you see that's kind of a large matrix. It's a matrix of size 2,984,123 entries times 313. It's quite big but it's sparse. A sparse means that the matrix contains a lot of zeros because like somewhere in the corner voxel of the CT, you won't have calculated those. So it only contains for each column um, um, those um, in the respective um, voxels. So this dimensionality here is exactly the number of voxels you have in your CT dose grid. And this is basically the number of beamlets. And in this matrix, for example, I could just now um, um, access, let's say with MATRAT coding a column, and then I would get the dose for the first beamlet, like here, it will not be able to show, but this contains now the dose for the first beamlet. We will later maybe evaluate this and, and display it additionally, but this is a little bit, um, 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 just to show you that this matrix exists and it lies now in the background and it's waiting for optimization. So basically really, and that's something basically you always do in treatment planning is compute this dose matrix. And it's clear that this matrix is a lot harder to compute. <laughs> okay, please do not, please stay always muted if possible because um, um, otherwise it gets a little chaotic. Um, so this really just um, just is a lot of harder to compute than a final dose distribution, which is just one image. So in, in principle, you have three, 313 images at the moment that give you dose for individual pencil beams. Okay. Um, and now when we optimize, so when we do like basically trigger this optimization button, you basically find a vector to multiply this matrix with. Um, and this worked now really fast because for the optimizer, 313 beamlets is actually not that much. Um, and the matrix vector opti like operations that it has to do in the background are actually quite fast. So it worked like really fast and the optimizer tried its best to work with your prescriptions, but it only has one beam available. So that didn't plan work out too well. So you have 
um, you got an image of a dose distribution that has like quite some strong beam intensity here. So it creates a lot of those here, but photons decay exponentially. So um, in, in some sense to, to get like these 50 divided by 30 in the, in the tumor, it has to really upregulate the dose here so that the decay is at this point. It tried to spare the organ by just regulating down the dose in the middle, but you can be quite sure that this will never um, 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 amount to a sensible treatment plan. So, like maybe going quickly back to the um, hands on, we basically now manage to do this step. Okay, the, then click optimize. Um, and basically this result is just for a starter to see if, 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 if it works. So we have like a question, if, if I change something like resolution, um, when you restart, everything will be set back. Um, and ZQH, you shouldn't import DICOM. Um, I said this yesterday multiple times, it will just, um, you can try it, but it won't work. Rather work with the MUD files provided. Okay, good. Um, Okay, so that's kind of the first setup. It's a very bad treatment plan. And what you can do with this treatment plan within MATRAT is two things. The first thing that you can do is save it for comparison to a plan that you later, which is done by this weird button called save to GUI. I think it's the next step in the workflow script. So when you click it, um, you will get basically this window here which asks you to provide a name and I will call it IMRT1 because it's one beam. Um, and then you basically have stored it here as IMRT1, okay? That's basically how it goes. Um, then you can look at it later. It will stick there when you do future computations. Um, I will now do something because I think we are progressing a little bit slower than anticipated, I will do something very quickly um, to show you um, um, something in the code so that doesn't work for the standalone users. So basically the result now is stored in this variable. And what you see here is basically, if you look in this variable, you see there's a dose cube um, and so on, but there's also this vector W and this vector W is exactly the intensities of all my beamlets. You see, it's basically just a real number. And if you now think that you have, could have chosen these numbers by hand, yeah, um, I, I wish you happy trying. It's like 330 numbers you have to choose and um, um, you would have like a lot of fun with that. But I will do now something to, to really basically show you how this, how this works from the mathematical side. So I will temporarily cre create a result for me. So I know that basically the matrix, I will basically create a temporary result. And I know that the matrix is in this structure. So this is basically my matrix. And in principle, I can multiply it with any vector that I want. I do not need to choose the vector that basically the optimization found for me here. I could basically also choose a vector that, um, or let's, let's maybe do it even, um, let's not call this result GUI, let's just call it temp. So I, I can just basically um, do this and make this product myself. So for example, I can choose a vector and this should be just the vector of once. Um, um, so basically, for example, this should have the size of the result GUI vector, but it should just be once. And now I compute a dose vector that basically is the same as if I would have chosen unit intensity. So it is zero, a lot of points, and there are some dose points here. Um, MATRAT also has a function that does this matrix vector product automatically. So I can do this like this, like this is now really fast. I just want to show you what happens if you choose once here. 
So it does this matrix vector product automatically and brings it in the right shape. And now I do another trick. I basically um, store, this is something I need to do from, from Matrot. I basically take the result I just generated like this, it should work. And now my result for multiplying the dose matrix with a product of ones gives me basically a comparison to an unoptimized result. So you see now my artificially created result shows up here and this is just an unoptimized fluence. It's basically every beamlet comes with unit intensity and it's an open field of photons that is not optimized at all. So that's basically just to show you how you can work with Matrat if you work with the code. You can you can play around, you can you can take other interface, uh, other weights, and you can modify these matrices, import your own matrices, and so on. So that's just basically how we interact with the code, and you can change stuff and understand more about what is going on in the optimization. Okay, regarding this initial result that we saved now, which was this IMRT1 result, um, or the physical dose, it still shows here. Um, we can also look a little bit more about like treatment plan outcomes. So I told you about like DVHs and, and, and those statistics, you can trigger those when clicking on show DVH QI down here. So this will make a, a computation um, of the dose volume histogram and you see that the dose volume histogram looks, um, looks kind of bad. Um, so basically the, um, the, if you have like 50 gray um, prescription and 30 fractions, your target should be covered um, with, with 1.66 gray. Like that's, that's what, when you do the, the, the calculation in your, in your head and you see it doesn't manage. So even the mean dose is too low, the minimum dose is way too low the organ at risk uh, um, gets a very high dose. So this plan really doesn't make sense. So regarding about submitting your results, what you can do from these windows and you can do both in the standalone and the code version is that you basically can just, um, <laughs> talking, can you mute, you mute things? Um, so basically what you can do here is that you can save this output, um, particularly the dose volume histogram, you can just save as, and then basically you get some options here and you can save it as a PNG file. You see, I exported some files um, today and you can just call it DVH IM, IMRT1, for example. And then it basically gets saved and for the dose, if you want to export the dose distributions that you see here, this is basically um, shown in the, um, the show DVH button is here, like below here. Like I'm showing it with my mouse right now. I'm circling it. Like here is the button. Look at the screen now and then you find it. Show DVH slash QI. That's it. Click on it and the DVH shows up, this button. Okay, um, and the second thing is, which is also shown in the workflow document is, um, is um, how to create a figure to store for your submission later, which is this, um, take a screenshot of the current dose profile plot. So if you look at the workflow document, it's like circled in red here. Um, and it's on the bottom and it looks like a tiny camera, like it's not very good. Um, I think I did this icon manually with filling pixels and somehow it looks like a camera, um, but that's where you click and this generates a screenshot. And you can basically, and it's not a screenshot of the full user interface. It's just basically the image that you see here. And you can basically just save this via, um, why, well, for example, I would say, 
So who is doing that? Please uh, mute. Aris is going to mute. Also. Yeah, perfect. Please uh, make sure you have your. So do you hear me again now? Perfect. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So please um, try to keep stay muted. Um, otherwise, I get an extreme feedback loop and can do uh, and and can tell nothing anymore. Um, so basically, you can save the screenshot, give it a name, for example. Just call it those IMRT one, and then you have these images. Okay. So um, these images are now in the folder where where you have um, um, basically that you selected. Or for example, for me, they are now in the Matrat folder. I just stored them in the normal Matrat folder. And then you can open them and you get like kind of a picture that you can put in a Word document and later submit. Um, okay, so that's the really standard workflow. So let's go back to the workflow document. Um, and um, so, yeah, this is what we just did. We created a DVH and saved it, and we created a screenshot button. And um, what we now do, we will now make a real plan. We will not make such a, let's say, um, simple experiment with just um, 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 one beam. And um, um, uh, Philip Wacker asks if it's also possible to calculate a differential DVH. Um, yes, it is, but it requires some manual calling of the code, um, but not from, from the user interface. Um, okay, so basically we'll now go to the next step, which in the workflow document here asks for repeating the same thing um, for at least five beams. Okay, I leave finding those, so you can deviate from what I am doing or what I will be doing. Um, so choose five beams. The important, like what I will choose five beams that are equidistantly spaced. So I will go like this. So I know that for five beams, um, this is um, like 72 degrees. So I just go in 72 degrees um, um, steps until I have five beams. And I, what is very important that you also add um, couch angles so that this number stays the same. Um, MATLAB or MATRAT doesn't really safeguard the input against having two different angle numbers here. So it will not calculate, but you will, which we all, you also will notice, but just make sure you have the same number of angles. You can also have um, more angles if you think your system can handle it. So if you want, you can also go with nine beams, which have like a 40 degree spacement, uh, spacing or something like this. Or you can choose completely different angles if you think you have something better than equidistant spacing. So now basically I have this nice star shape here that I'm going to compute. And then I just repeat the steps that I did before. So since I have new angles, I need to calculate um, a new um, 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 dose matrix. So you see the optimize button is gone because I have new geometric information that I need to compute first. So I compute it. Now this will take longer because I have four beams. And now basically I have uh, to compute four times approximately 300 beamlets. Um, so this takes a little bit longer. And also, of course, it now needs more memory. My, mat my matrix grows bigger. We will quickly take a look after the computation to, to get a feeling of how big it became. Um, and and um, basically go back to the command window. Yeah, you see it has a beam four or five, beam five or five. So for those who don't work with the standalone, but with the code, um, they can basically look at this. Um, and when you check out the DIJ now, the variable changed. You see it has more pixels, 1,377. Um, so basically, um, 
if you check out these mat this matrix, it also became bigger. It has now 1,377 columns. Um, okay, good. Um, but for the optimization itself and for the treatment planning optimizer, um, this actually doesn't make a technical difference. The optimizer just has now a bigger matrix to deal with, um, but it can use the, exactly the same algorithm. So it just has a bigger matrix. It doesn't care mathematically where the beams come from at the stage. It just knows they are in the matrix and, and um, will get optimized. So if I click optimize, this basically um, just creates a different a new optimization run and you see now it starts going slower. The reason for it, the planning becoming slower is because my problem size grew. So I have more beamlets, I have more dose information that I need to evaluate in every step. Um, but as you see, this additional overhead is worth it because now um, the, the, the optimizer can use this like additional 1000 beamlets that you gave it um, to find a set like a fluence modulation. That's why we call it intensity modulation. You modulate the intensities of the incoming beamlets to, um, to um, 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 to basically give this um, different, to give like these different intensities at different um, um, points of the beam. And you see that this is actually already closer to what, you know, this ideal idea of the dose distribution that, um, that you had before. Um, so um, like the target is covered. It has like some geometric artifacts here because five beams are not enough to create a very smooth round shape here. You see that the core is actually spared quite nicely. There is some high dose region here that is a little bit higher than the rest, but actually we are kind of approaching this and the more beams we would select. So if someone has um, 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 nine beams, he would have probably even better coverage and more closely um, to the, to the, um, to this ideal dose distribution that we saw this morning. So this is basically um, now the first correct IMRT plan, plan for photons um, that, that you created. Um, so let's go back to the workflow document. Um, I see um, um, some uh, people have problems. Sometimes this can be due to um, a wrong input of the beam angles. Uh, maybe there are also, also some hidden problems that may occur in one or two problems. Um, so if it's error using WordCat, it's probably something with how the beam angles have been input. Yeah. <laughs> to put in. You have to put a space between beam angles. Yeah, not no, no semicolons or anything. <laughs> Okay, but um, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit sad. We really cannot help everything. We just like, it will probably work for, for 80 to 90% and some people of you will have issues, but you are free to try it afterwards again. If you have issues, you also don't have to, of course, submit everything. Um, yeah, and that couch angles must be the same number as beam angles. Um, that was also something I said. Um, that it will throw an error if you don't have the same number of couches beam angles. Um, that is that is one of the things. Um, Nicholas, maybe if uh, people have actually serious uh, problems, they can uh, just uh, make screenshots uh, and uh, just uh, insert them in a doc file and they drop them in their uh, uh, Google Drive. Yes, they can. We, we check them offline if there is something that it might uh, be useful for you yes there is okay yeah like from what i see so far it's i guess like just um problems with um how to put in the the numbers and so on mm -hmm. so yeah like just when you submit it just tell what what the problem is um mm -hmm. and so i will just continue now so basically 
we now have have done this um, and here it's also again said the number of gantry and couch angles have to be identical um, and now we basically can look um, at at the 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 um, those again so the first thing we can do is that we can save it and call it um, irmrt5 for example we again use the save to gui button um, and call it irmrt5 and basically we can show and now look at the statistics of this plan um, so basically now i see it's stupid that the target is that yellow so it's not that easy on the screen, but I think it's still identifiable. Um, so basically what you see now that this has become like a much more sensible for a target, of course. Um, and um, what you basically see now here is that the mean dose in the target is as prescribed um, this 1.66 um, um, grades quite close to to the prescription of 50 gray divided by 30 fractions. Um, so, what you basically um, um, can also check, like in in MATLAB, you can basically select from the tools data tips, and you can look at some points here, and and you basically can slide along this line and, and, and see a little bit. Um, how the dose decreases like for 1.666. Um, you still see that it's quite also the median here. So 50% of the volume are somewhat covered with this. So basically the target dose is now nearly not completely symmetric around this. Um, um, and, and um, oh, sorry, the legend has gone. And that makes quite sense. You also see that the organ dose is greatly reduced. So last time it really was up to here and now it's um, greatly reduced. Um, it's, it's um, if you see what basically the prescription was, it was 25 in 30 fractions. So that's also quite close to, to the level we achieve here. Um, um, so basically our optimizer with, with the degrees of freedom that five beams offer did quite a good job on the IMRT side. Um, we can also save this again by basically um, saving it um, and, and, and choosing like DVH IMRT five, for example. So you have it for your for submitting the Google Drive um, document. Um, okay, and of course you can also again take a screenshot. Um, basically, I will call this those IMRT5 then here, and then you have basically images of your one beam photons and your five beam photons. So um, that's basically in the workflow document. Um, we can also now take a closer look of the, on the mean and maximum dose um, to both of these dose distributions. So what you can do um, when you have basically, sorry, when you have the DVH, um, you can open both DVHs. So you can first go to this and open this one, but you can also go to um, the, the um, previous plan and open the old DVH. So now you basically have both of them um, available and now you compare, can compare doses. Like for example, the mean dose we already compared that's much closer to the prescription with this, with the new plan with five beams. The minimum target dose is much higher, still probably not yet completely, uh, still that could be improved, but that looks very good. Um, you see that um, the maximum dose in the core is much lower for the new plan. It's like 0 0.9 gray versus, versus um, 1.4. And also the mean dose is much lower. So this makes sense. If you have different um, um, setups, um, different irradiation setups that might look um, different. Um, okay. So that's basically the first um, 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 photon. 
um, um, thing. So I have like a few questions I will quickly answer. Have you already implemented to run on GPU? I have some tests, but I have nothing in the official MATRAT um, um, version. Any rule of thumbs concerning even or odd numbers of themes to use, and it is usually a good choice to have them evenly spaced. Um, so for photons, you often go for IMRT with approximately evenly spaced um, um, beams. You don't take even numbers for evenly spaced beams because then these beams are opposing each other. You have basically, if you, for example, choose four beams, you have 0, 90, 180, 270, and they oppose each other. And this is not that desired um, because then you basically sum up your entrance and ex ex exit channels with each other. Um, gives better doses to, um, or let, let's say lower absolute doses in the, in the healthy tissue when you um, choose odd beam angles. And the number of beams is basically depending on how complex your tumor shape is. The more complex the tumor shape, the more <laughs> beams in a sense. It's not completely true, but that's, a, I think, a good rule of thumb. For very complex prostate setting, you might end up with 12 beams. For simpler ones, you might end up with five or seven. OK. Um, how to control the number of iterations or maybe time? That's like there's a lot of things that is possible from the code. And I, this is not basically, I do not want, can, I cannot show you every detail of MATRAD. You can really try to look into the code later and try to figure out. But there's a lot of things um, um, to, to, to change um, and to modify from the MATRAD code. I just showed you that this information is accessible, but if you need some specific things, uh, you, you should take the time and figure it out yourself um, if you have like specific questions regarding your research um, because other people here have other questions there and then basically we, we start to 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 um, answer questions that are not interesting to everybody so but saying this the last question with the relative electron density I will just say we will come to that um, and tomorrow okay so um, yes, what I want you to do now with the knowledge you know now how to create treatment plans and to save them and to save the data, what I want you to do now and um, before we move to the um, protons is basically follow the next step in the, in the, um, in the um, workflow document, which is this just to change the trade-off between target coverage and organic risk sparing. So basically what you could do is, um, so I go back to the five beam plan, that you change these penalty factors. So looking at the last DVH, we basically saw that um, the minimum dose in the target is still not super, close to the prescription value. So you could think about a way of tuning this, that these penalty factors to achieve better target coverage. Remember these penalty factors basically directly relate to how important it is for you to achieve an objective. So improving the target coverage might be possible by changing this penalty here. Um, um, or do, doing more organ at risk sparing or more sparing of the remaining tissue might be possible by changing this pen these penalties. So maybe choose another setting um, that is a little, like it can be really extreme just to see the effect. Um, so that you really learn that changing these penalties allows you as a classical planner, let's say, to, to, to switch your trade-offs in planning. So um, I will just give you five minutes. I need to get something to drink to, or, like, to, or like two or three minutes to, to create a new plan um, that you then can also save um, with the save to GUI, with a screenshot from the DVH and compare the values. Um, and then I will also do one quite quickly, but I really need to, need to get something to drink. My, my voice is already um, fading. So see you in two minutes and Hans-Peter is there to answer some questions or, or offer help. Is this okay? Yes, of course. Yeah. See you in two minutes.
Um, yeah, there was one question in the chat, will, which I will directly answer. Is the 50 the target dose value in gray? Yes, that's true. Um, basically, 50 divided by the number of fractions. So you can do the math. This will be the dose you are optimizing for. Um, for those of you who are running um, Matrat on Mac, um, it could be that you have uh, that there is an error message popping up when you run an optimization, and if this is happening that IP opt cannot be executed, um, then you have to go to your system preferences to security and privacy tab, and then basically allow this IP opt op optimization function. But if you have such a problem, then it's best to directly contact me in the chat. Um, what are the ranges for the p-value for the target and OERs? So this is totally up to the treatment planner. So up to you. You can set any number you want. And this is um, really what matters is the relative importance between these weights. So for instance, um, can it's the same as if you set the penalty of one organ to one and for the target to 10. So then you have a ratio of one to 10. And the result would be the exact same thing if you would select 10 for the organ and risk and 100 for the tumor. So then also in this case, you have a ratio of 1 to 10. So I hope this could answer your question. Yes, the color scale represents the dose of a single fraction. That's correct. OK. Uh, maybe regarding the color, uh, something to point out is that uh, the um, uh, maximum for every plan is uh, the red and is not the same for uh, different uh, plans. So one one compares looking at the colors, one has to take this into account. No? Yes, when you look at the color scale, um, basically the color scale will change between plans automatically. Um, can fix this. Um, so for example, if you compare the IMRT5 plan, um, but usually the color scale and the label changes, so it's always evident. But you can also fix the settings here when you switch. And then you basically see that this dose region here is, is quite intense. It basically goes out of the color scale. Um, so you see this is absolutely unacceptable dose to the healthy tissue here. So that might be quite interesting when switching behind beams. Regarding the export button, like really don't use this export button. The export button creates a binary export. And um, um, yes, since I do not really know what settings you all choose, um, oh, the invalid max problem, then I guess your, your MATLAB version is too, too old, probably. Um, that's an error that can occur when the when the MATLAB version is too old to understand it. Um, Leonardo, do you use a? Um, I can give you a fix um, that that can work. You use the code, right? Okay. Um, Hans Peter, do you know how to fix this to download the old IP opt? Um, from the initial version, then then he might be able to to optimize. Yeah. Okay, um, okay. The overlap priority priority. Just to quickly explain it, this is basically exactly what the tooltip says. It kind of um, there's a weird uh, looks weird, um, but it tells the optimizer how to deal with overlap because you know voxels that are in this contour are also in this contour. So a voxel that is here, it belongs to this contour and to this contour. And basically, this is kind of a, a an order on how these voxels overlap. So basically, the optimizer will, um, will basically, the lowest number here means um, the highest um, layer. So basically, when, if it is on layer one, it overlaps layer two and three. So basically the voxel that is in here will only contribute to this organ because it's on layer one 
and not to this organ because it's on layer three. Yeah. Okay. So I will now illustrate, um, if some of you have um, problems, how to deal with. Um, um, Nicholas, this. can I just quickly show again the our wiki page where we have the animation of gantry and couch angle? Um, shall, shall we skip it? I think we should skip it because we have this visualization. I think the question is more that you just need to add these angles and subtract these angles, right? Um, so you need to set these angles here in these fields. Okay, yeah, show the link and then people yeah. can, can check yeah. it out. Okay, so basically regarding the task of changing the priorities, you basically um, um, can now work with, with changing this and I will just change how important for a change because most of you probably worked on the outer target and the core. I will just make the body tissue 10 times more important. So it now is a penalty of 1000 similar as the target. Now I optimize again. So let's optimize. Um, good. So the optimization problem will not really, you will not see a difference. You may see a difference in the objective function value. So what this actually shows, because I didn't think I tell it, it really shows the progress of the optimizer. So that's the, that's the full um, function that it builds from what you see in this objective and constraints window. And it really tries to decrease this function. And at some point it seems to not decrease anymore. And then it's when the optimizer decides um, this is close to the minimum. In MATLAB, you can change this um, so that it optimizes longer and so on, or optimizes shorter, convert, basically stops more early, but we won't go into details there. That's something that you can figure out when you, when you work with the code. So what you see now that it may look like it became a little more um, strict regarding the dose to put in the organs list. So that's not as high as before anymore. So if I basically check this out, you see there is a little bit more dose, like just from the inspection, you see that everything shrank together a little bit because there was more focus now um, to, to, um, to, to reduce the dose in the, in the healthy tissue. And if we generate the DVH for this, you also see qualitative differences here in the target, especially. Um, so basically, um, um, the minimum dose, which was earlier like 1.5 something in the target is now 1.4. So we traded those to the target against like um, um, against those to spare the normal tissue. So basically that's the trade-off I was talking about that we can influence with this penalty parameters. This can be quite unintuitive and advanced systems, especially for photon planning, they often allow you to compute basically a set of, of weights that you then can just basically use sliders to change because um, it's much more intuitive than to tune these, um, these, um, these um, penalty factors. Okay, so that's really um, like the tedious planning process that you often hear is, is switching these, these um, these um, parameters. So that's um, that's about this. And I think now we should go to the proton therapy because we already are like quite in with the basics. So we do not do this. Um, this is really now, um, this is some, um, some special that I thought about. Um, and uh, so we don't do this now. It's about photons and we are not so interested in doing only photons. So we are now going to protons, basic intensity modulated proton therapy. Okay. And the first thing we do there is going back to the graphical user interface and here changing our radiation mode to protons. So here we switch to protons. Nothing changes because we haven't recalculated our dose. It still shows the photons. That might, might be some 
the, for to some people um, counterintuitive because in a in most of the commercial systems you basically get reset completely and don't see anything anymore um, to not mistake it for a proton plan which which you shouldn't uh, do anyways um, but um, going back to the workflow document um, it basically says directly to calculate the dose distribution for protons but what I want you to do first is not choose five beams for that because we really want to make the comparison to the zero degree degree um, photon um, beam so really just remove all the angles and reset this to zero and zero okay so really want to show what can one proton beam do versus one photon beam when you have set this you don't have to modify anything else um, you just do the same steps as before you calculate the dose influence matrix and you calculate the uh, and maybe quickly for those who have the environment you can again check your variables what changed um, and something quite interestingly changed um, the dose calculations seem to be very fast actually so you might have realized that it ran basically i can calculate it again i think this shouldn't crash matlab but you see basically it's going from left to right it's quite quick um, but if you look at the dij like this is the dose influence matrix it seems to have a lot more pixels like it's really factor 10. this now comes from that you have this additional modulation in depth okay um, again you can only use this environment and look at these parameters when you do use the MATLAB with the code. It does not work from the standalone application. I, I repeat it. Okay, so what you see now here is that you have a lot more pixels. So for the ones that for the ones that are using the standalone application, just lay like lie back and 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 um, enjoy what I'm telling you. Um, so basically, what you see here is that the number of pixels a lot bigger than in the one beam photo plan which was like 300 because you have this additional degree of of depth that basically an energy of a proton beam creates and and creates a break peak at a certain depth you also see this in this stf um, which has the geometry where i can look into basically the geometric rays and see that each ray has multiple proton energy settings that basically get get switched through um, to create um, um, the different break peak positions in depth. So you see that here. So basically, from the pure geometry, we have nearly the same amount of like directions we shoot at, which is like almost also again three hundred, um, like a little bit less um, due to how the geometry is kind of like a little bit um, differentially aligned but on this on each of these like 300 directions we choose we have multiple energies so that's basically why suddenly i have like 10 times more pixels or let's say beamlets here and this you also see in the matrix so the matrix is becoming much bigger but still the dose calculation was basically as fast as the photon dose calculation and i ask a question to the chat why was this the case has somebody an idea it has to do with a very specific um, thing about um, protons again despite having to compute 10 times the 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 beamlets i have the same dose calculation time or nearly the same i mean that's unfair because it also depends on the complexity of the dose calculation algorithm of course it could be much slower with using a monte carlo and so on um, so so maybe this question is not too good um, but to answer it if you look at protons protons basically have no dose after a certain point in a sense so basically you spare a lot of voxels to compute those in um, which also means that this matrix despite having um, a much more columns now um, um, it isn't necessarily 
um, um, larger in memory because it has a lot more zeros per beamlet. So basically for the photons, you always have to compute the full dose for the exponential decay. And for protons, you only have to compute it up to the break peak. Um, and then afterwards, there are zero dose in a sense. Um, so that's quite, that's quite nice. Um, um, in the dose calculation, you also see this when you now trigger the optimization for your single proton beam, which I will do now. So I will basically trigger my proton beam. And you see that per iteration, it's very fast. But since it has so many variables, um, it needs to, it runs for more iterations. There's just more variables to choose. We have now 3000 variables to choose from. And that's basically the beam that our um, optimizer comes up with. And yes, so that looks in principle already much better than what you could achieve with one um, 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 photon beam. And that's basically one thing you should always keep in mind. Already with one photo proton beam, you can achieve close to acceptable. You might not really accept the, the dose in the entrance channel here. So that's maybe quite high. Um, but still, if you compare, you have no, no dose anywhere else than in this entrance channel. You have like a very good target coverage from just visual inspection that it looks very good. Um, so outlook that you already see, and this will be become very important on Thursday, is that basically here, the display switch to RBE times dose. Okay, so RBE times dose means there's already some biology in there. Like it's just jumped in um, without us like really thinking about it. But the only thing that it is doing is basically multiplying the physical dose of protons by 1.1. We say it's a little bit more effective everywhere, but but like 10%, okay? So if you switch to the physical dose, you see just basically that the color scale is kind of reduced by 10% in a sense, and uh, but you have the same distribution. So the biology here is not very complicated. And you also basically have an option here that switch to constant RBE times dose. So basically you optimized dose times 1.1. It's not a, it's, it's no, not, not rocket science. It's just multiplying 1.1. So really that's no, no big deal in a sense to incorporate biology here. Okay. So again, what you can do is you can save this result as I call it now, proton one. Um, you can take a look at the DBH. Um, so if you look at this here, you see now the DBH of the one proton looks very good actually, um, which also shows you a little bit an issue of a DBH because the target looks wonderful. The, the organ at risk looks wonderful in a sense. Um, and the body looks as always like this very weird uh, plateau region here. But of course you do not necessarily see in your DVH that you have like this very high entrance region because it still accumulates a lot and it doesn't really give you local information about the dose anymore. So you don't really know that all the dose here is in this region, okay? But still the DVH looks beautiful. It looks uh, probably even better than the five beam DVH from, from the photon world. So again, you can save this, um, export it for your, for your um, results. So I call it DVH, um, proton one. And um, you can also, again, use the screenshot button here to save it. Save also the dose proton one. So um, then you get some images out of this. But that's basically the transition to photons and protons. And you really see like already with this one beam, um, you get some really good results. In the workflow, it basically says that you should increase also the number of beams to three beams. Um, I will basically 
do this like really quickly before we jump to the um, to the um, 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 prostate uh, case and do some real treatment planning. Um, so, so let me just choose some beam angles. You can choose three beam angles as you wish. I now simulate that all of them are coming somewhat. Um, like you can choose also other angles. I do like something like you may this. Ask something. Um, yes. To the prost to the prostate therapy, don't we use the box technique? We can. I mean, we can start to discuss about what would be the 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 best um, technique, or what do you mean? Um, with box technique. I mean angles uh, 0, 90, uh, 180, and 270. So we, we can go to the prostate afterwards. So what we do on the prostate um, is you can also, if you want to, you can use the box 0, two, like the, the four um, angles 0, 90, 180, 270. Um, like for now, it's like basically free choice of what you do. Afterwards, we go to the prostate and then we can also do basically have free choice there. Um, because if like some people have this protocol and some people have this protocol and um, basically this, I really kind of don't want to promote the one protocol or the other protocol here. I just want to tell people if someone says you that's the protocol, how to implement it or how to do it. I think it is better to proceed than we'll okay. discussion afterwards. Yep. Yes. So basically, I will just quickly have these three angles. Um, and basically, the calculation now takes a little longer, of course, and I do this optimization. Um, so basically, that's just all the steps I did before. It's now getting repetitive. You see, planning can be kind of repetitive in a sense, doing always the same steps. Um, you see the optimization now runs even longer because we have even more degrees of freedom. Like um, um, we can take a quick look for those who do not use the standalone. Basically, we now have three times the number of beamlets. We are up to 11,000 or like 10,500 uh, approximately. Um, so this quite increased. Um, but still optimization and dose calculation was manageable. Maybe it takes a little bit longer for you. Um, and I think just qualitatively, you see that already with three angles of proton beams, we now get a very nice distribution that has very low dose in the um, 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 so basically in the entrance region, because now we can divide it like basically you can distribute the entrance doors across the larger regions. You also see that basically all the beams, that's also something we can quickly look at here. Basically, if you go to this display option, you can also look at an individual beam here, like the RBE times those beam one. So you see that each of the beam basically puts a special focus somewhere else. So the optimizer basically distributes those across the beams. And just as a sum of the beam, it, it will basically give you this result. There's also another technique basically to optimize each beam individually, which is called single field uniform dose, which is quite close to using um, passive scattering and which is sometimes used to make things more robustness just for completeness. But this is full IMPT where you basically all beam angles that you select are optimized at once. And then the beam is the summary, the, the, the sum of that, not the summary. OK. So when you have this, um, this outcome, so we just we do not go further into detail since we still want to do like um, one or two treatment plans. Um, so what you can basically do is, is you don't have to save it to the GUI anymore because we will now, so you can do it. I can call it Proton3. Um, but the most important thing is that you look at the DVH and you see 
the changes in the DVH are not very big, especially to target and, and organ risk, because the most impact we had um, on the on the dose path to the remaining healthy tissue, which is so large that it has this weird DVH shape anyway. Um, so, but if you want, you can also save this, um, store it to DVH um, proton five um, or proton three, not proton five, so that you can have it for your document later and also to, to look at it after the school. And um, something that basically you can also save, sorry, is the is the um, is the dose again? So that's basically again we are getting into some kind of repetitive workflow. Um, okay, so that's basically now you have kind of three um, um, three beams. And some interesting question that I want to answer because it popped up is if you wanted to know if possible if it's possible to give different weight to the beams. Um, so you can artificially try to do this. So what people would actually do when they do IMPT, they would draw a contour here or something like this to basically down-regulate a beam when they do full IMPT. So basically, um, the, in, the, in general, you let the optimizer decide on how to work with, on how to work with, um, with uh, on, on how to distribute the dose, but um, what you basically can, what would do sometimes is just put a block here, which will you down regulate this beam, just give it stronger penalties. And then you can down regulate this beam and so on. So there's another question, if you can extract LAT data from the simulation, yes, you can do it with MATRAT, but I didn't activate it here, so just to minimize storage and computation times. Um, if you're interested in that, just check out the wiki and check out the code, and then, then you'll find out how to basically extract LET as well. Um, OK, now basically we stop with this. And um, since this all now um, took a little bit longer than expected, I think we should at least do one proton treatment plan on a prostate. Um, um, so basically, yes. Because you can have uh, 15 minutes from complete the evaluation form because I think people now know how to do it and they're familiar okay. with that. So we can go Good. till the 16, 15. Then let's, then let's do both plans. I think it should work. We do not have to spend so much time on it. Um, so basically, you know, we discard what we did here. We load the prostate phantom. So it's again in the phantoms folder. Um, and there's the prostate phantom. So it will um, basically reset everything. And um, so what we basically um, see here is that all of these settings switched. So my plan parameters are still there, um, but now we have a different case, um, which, uh, which is the prostate. So if we scroll through this, I will just quickly stop the visualization of the beams. You basically can see quite obviously the bladder, um, the prostate, uh, the rectum is not so visible, but it has like this dark olive green here, um, like this. It gets more visible in other slices of the of the patient, I think. Oh, sorry, I'm scrolling the wrong di wrong direction. Um, yeah, it doesn't really. The the color scale is not the best, um, and in between the rectum. And the bladder, you see the prostate. You also see that there's some overlap delineated, um, which sometimes um, happens, and especially for the planning target volume. I think um, you you often delineate overlap to, to other organs because you need to cover, that's what I discussed this morning, you cover the uncertainties with the PTV. We also will figure out tomorrow that this does not always work for protons as, as well as it as, as you'd hope. Um, so basically the two structures that you have is the prostate that should be irradiated here with the PTV and um, um, 
the lymph nodes, which often also get um, um, irradiated, there's also PTV um, associated to that, the blue one. And you have different prescription levels. So the PTV for the prostate here gets 68 gray in 30 fractions and the PTV for the lymph nodes gets 56 gray. That's basically encoded in the name here. Um, and additionally to these things, you, for example, here have the, the femoral heads. I think that's, that's the most um, important um, things. And what I would like to do now, so basically when you go to the workflow document to task number three, um, where you basically can, where we are already inspecting this, it says you can also click open 3D view, but I urge you not to do this because it can take quite a while to compute the 3D representation in MATLAB. It's, it's not the fastest one, so please don't do this. Um, um, and then we basically we make through two um, we make two treatment plans one for photons and one for protons and what you see down here is a number of prescriptions that you should um, that you should fulfill so most of them should be clear like mean dose and max dose and basically the ones that you read here or this one they, th these you can read from the DVH. So that's something that you can basically, when you show the DVH, you can check 95% of the, um, okay, that's not completely um, clear, but you can basically, um, 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 now nah, that's, that's a little bit, I should have explained this earlier, I, I, I guess. So, um, what this means is that um, basically it's, it's the dose at um, that 95% of the volume received. So it's a point in the DVH um, should be the prescribed dose. So we acknowledge that we cannot always have the minimum dose at the prescribed dose, um, but you can also try to get the minimum dose up to that. Um, to this 56 and 68 gray and check all these others. It's, it's a very difficult problem for now, um, um, but uh, we will go through this after the photon plan to see how this exactly works. Um, I will may maybe just start a, a very quick um, photon plan um, that runs through, like again with my five angles, you can basically take the time choose more angles, um, um, choose other angles for the photon treatment. Make sure you switch to photons here. And then I will do a very quick optimization with the standard parameters and explain the, the, um, the param parameters to you. So, but what you can start with before you think about the prescriptions um, that you see here, because I should have explained something um, and I forgot it, um, is basically just choose number of beams, gantry and couch angles, um, and then calculate the dose. And then we will um, soon figure out objectives and what these prescription means. You see the dose calculation um, takes a longer time. So um, it's a more complex case. It should work on all systems. I hope it's not, the case is not too large on, on your system. And if it is too large, you can reduce the number of, of angles, but then you won't get nice treatment plans, I guess. And now I click um, optimize just with the standard settings and then explain the prescription a little bit more. I get a question, do you need the, to add the femoral heads as constraints or objectives? Maybe you don't, maybe you, you, you need to. That's, that's something, so maybe the dose is naturally low enough there, um, but maybe it's, you, you really need to, to add them. Um, that's something you, you can figure out during planning. So yes, that's the standard setting treatment plan that, um, that you get. Um, 
So you see, it has some interesting features. And now let's check out the prescriptions that we that we basically um, 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 see here. So basically, let me just open the DVH and the document on the at the same time, so we can have the side by side. So basically, there are some prescriptions here that we want to achieve. One is basically this D95 should be 56 slash 68 gray. So basically, this value is actually given directly by, um, by Matrat. So it's not so difficult to read it. Um, um, and what it kind of means, if you look at the DVH, is basically it checks where the 95% volume is, um, which is here and evaluates the dose there. So this is not completely true. Um, now, not the completely true point, but anyways, it is given here for the PTV 56 and the PTV 68. So you basically can check what dose is the D95. And then you just need to make the computations um, basically because you have to compute um, this for 30 fractions. So you have to multiply it by 30. You can take, take your calculator here, just a little bit of mathematical exercise on the side. Um, but what you can see here is that um, basically for the prescription, you need to put this to the right levels. And I think you can directly um, um, see that this might be too low. Um, this could be actually um, close, but um, yeah, you have to figure that out to see if this actually fulfills this prescription. And then you need to find a way to um, to to uh, to increase this contribution and to um, to make this closer to the prescription. You also see for the femoral heads, for example. Um, you can basically see that the mean dose seems to be um, um, actually quite low. So if you 0 0.4 times 30 is def definitely lower than 15 gray. So that already looks quite good from the beginning. Um, what about the maximum dose? This might be a little bit over the top. Um, Okay, and then there are like these other prescriptions, which are DVH prescriptions. Um, basically here you look at the 30 gray mark. So you would say, okay, 30 gray, that's quite easy. That's one gray per fraction. And the rectum and bladder should receive less than 50 gray. And at the moment they receive quite a lot more. So it's like quite strict. This is, this is really strict and it might be quite difficult because this would be, should be smaller than 50%. Um, and you also have like these um, these um, these um, 60 gray. So you look at the two gray and this should be smaller than 20 and 25%. This actually looks quite, quite good, I would say. Um, okay, so that's the prescriptions. And the last one is a little bit kind of an, a more qualitative prescription to have no really those hotspots in the remaining tissue. So I will give you now um, some time, um, let's say until four to get the photo plan ready. Don't try too hard. Um, there might be a reason why the prescriptions are so strict um, when I chose them. Um, may you put these prescriptions as constraints for optimization? Yes, you can try, but I warn you constraints can be more counterintuitive than you think because they may might make the problem infeasible if it isn't feasible and then your optimizer will will have its issues and um, so using constraints is always like you have to you have to have some experience there um, but you can try it maybe something good um, will come out of it so i will give you really um 10 minutes, I will do my own treatment plan. Uh, let's see how, how good I can get with this five beam angles. And maybe you chose different beam angles and can get better or something like else. It's really not about like 
creating the best treatment plan. It's just to show you that, that these treatment planning problems can be quite strict. Also, I have to say, some of these prescription levels are actually um, really more strict than, for example, some Quantic report also say so. Um, might not be the easiest problem to solve here. So I will stop sharing my screen quickly so you don't just do what I do. Um, and we will see in, in a few minutes what you came up with or what I came up with. And you can basically put this for later discussion then into your document. So uh, meanwhile, we managed to solve the IP opt issue with the older linking version. Good. Uh, maybe I should clarify about the recordings that we can obtain them only after the session, the Zoom session is uh, finished. So the recordings of this session can only be available this evening once we shut down uh, Zoom. And uh, the recordings of the morning sessions are already in Indigo page, as I wrote in the chat. And certainly the recordings of yesterday, they are in the Indigo timetable. Therefore, uh, participants can uh, check them uh, so that they don't need to ask uh, the same questions again and again. Uh, things that have been already explained, uh, uh, please make sure that uh, you study them and you come uh, tomorrow having looked at them, okay? Thanks. Uh, Nicholas, uh, while waiting for the treatment planning to run, uh, uh, could we use the time that, uh, to communicate something? Yes, of course. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so um, uh, to save time, uh, since we are late, uh, let me take the opportunity and um, outline a kind of an assignment um, based on all the things that uh, you have um, uh, heard and learned on the treatment planning, we would like you to think of um, questions that could be part of a quiz and uh, possible answers. And uh, Damir is going to elaborate uh, afterwards. He will show you one such example. Um, and then you can upload uh, these kind of uh, questions and answers uh, uh, together with your results uh, in the Google Drive. Damir, please go ahead. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Damir. And yes, thank you, Yota, for introduction. So uh, I don't know how much you know about Particle Therapy Masterclass, which is a similar event, which is organized for high school uh, students. And uh, we always prepare for them a short quiz. And what I want from you, because I know there are some of you who are creative, uh, to think about some questions which you think would be good for this quiz. And I will show you some examples so you have an idea what, what, what do we want to do. So we don't want uh, intermediate question, uh, questions, like very hard questions, but we want some something very simple. For example, like basics, uh, which physical principle is important for hadron therapy? Uh, and the correct answer from uh, four is Bragg Peak. But for example, you also see we have Brad Pitt. We also want to make it a little bit funny. Uh, also, the type of interaction, which is the main uh, type of interaction between part charged particles, it's electromagnetic force. Also, we have something uh, from Matrat. So you can maybe think something uh, involving Matrat. For example, from the picture below, what uh, kind of particles create such those distribution? Uh, these are photons because we have exponential, uh, uh, you can see it on image, I think. Uh, also, for example, the most commonly used ions for therapy are, uh, the correct answer will be probably protons because they are also ions, but uh, from these one, it will be carbon ions. Also, what is the unit for absorbed dose? So this is very simple, introducing new units. That's one gray, which we are using. We are using grays today on, during the hands-on session. And uh, okay, uh, I think those questions are enough. So you have an idea 
and I would really appreciate if you come up with some uh, questions. Uh, to complement to what uh, Damir said, uh, uh, one thing is uh, the simple uh, questions for uh, the school children, but uh, more complicated questions are also welcome because we will uh, have such a quiz uh, for university uh, level students as well. So whatever you can think of, uh, the questions and the answers, please uh, send uh, in your Google Drive together with your results. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So it's four and um, since the question regarding the constraints came up, I decided as like a little bit educational material to show you why constraints can be difficult. Um, and, and what's the problem with them? They sound like magic. They sound my I'll give my optimizer a value and he will stay below it. But um, um, sometimes this can can become a problem. For example, if you say the constraint is something that is very hard to achieve. For example, think of you optimizing the path from your computer desk to your bathroom with the constraint as the bathroom door stays closed. Um, that may become a problem. And the similar thing is true. If you um, if if you would put this as an objective, like like minimize the opening of the bathroom door, then you could like slip through a very small opening. But if you say it has to stay closed, you won't get into the bathroom. So that's um, that's like an analogy why constraints can become quite difficult. And the problem that I optimized, I will share the screen now, is there to to illustrate this. Um, so basically. Um, let me share the screen again. So you will directly see a very weird looking dose distribution. Um, but first, before we go into that, let me explain my um, optimization problem to you. So what I did is I added some objectives and in principle, I used um, the advanced objectives that are available in MATRAD that basically directly work on the DVH to fulfill or to get close to some of the objectives. But more importantly, like this is for key example on the plan on the bladder, I um, basically want to reduce um, the DVH um, 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 basically um, pulling the value to, to the 25 um, um, percentage volume at 60 gray, which was one of the prescription, the same for the rectum. Um, but more importantly, and that's what I really wanted to show you, is that I set DVH constraints. So I really tried to put this D95 here as a constraint by basically saying at 68 gray, the minimum volume that you should um, um, irradiate with at least 68 gray is 95% of the volume. Um, that's a constraint now. It has no penalty anymore because uh, you can think of it. That's not true. Like that's not mathematically true, but you can think of it like I increase the penalty to infinity and then um, this constraint has to be infilled. But increasing the penalty to infinity is not the same as putting a constraint there. It's like something entirely different, but I think you get the idea. I really want to fulfill this. And you see that the optimizer has a really hard time doing this. Um, um, and what happens is that you have extremely high entrance doses here and stuff like this. And if you look at the DVH, um, what you see is also, you see this also in the DVH that basically here's this, um, here are these marks um, and the optimizer really just cares about fulfilling this constraint here at the 95% line. It might not even manage to do so, but I think it, it did and here as well. But the rest is basically coming, coming completely, is, is getting a completely secondary goal for the optimizer. So basically he, it already tries to, to like move the, like pull the dose down here as much as it can and other doses will be pulled up. Um, and the problem is also that the thing where it can do most damage 
because it's such a large volume, can do a lot of local damage just by pulling up those in the entrance channels because these are least penalized. It's the, 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 the weakest objective. And so it becomes quite difficult then to manage this. So constraints can become quite a problem because they really force the optimizer to do something. And if this like, it, this is very difficult, um, this can create such doses. Um, so if you try this with objectives, you get basically a softer um, 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 transition towards achieving your goals and you are not basically hell-bent on achieving them. And then you might maybe in the end be okay with, with baby being 0 0.1 gray below, um, but you cannot tell this to the to the particular constraint in a sense. So this um, is just an example. I mean, in general, what I wanted to show is that achieving all of this is very difficult, like with this photom setup with only five beams, um, particular because the like five beams of photons for a prostate. I mentioned it before. It's not it's not very uh, a very good setting. So that's a very bad plan that you see here. I tried really hard to give the optimizer this target prescriptions with constraints. And now it, the optimizer tried really hard to fulfill that at the cost of basically anything else. If you look at the DVH again, um, you kind of see that um, it actually did not such a bad job on the rectum um, and the, 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 the bladder. So they look actually not that bad. But especially the body tissue, which is just not, which looks like, okay, it's decreasing and, and so on, which looks also like quite okay. Um, it just looks really bad on, on the, on the, um, on, the um, on the image where you see there's like so severe hotspots um, that this may not be an option for your plan. So that's really just, educational material that you're getting now. It's not a plan that, that, that I would do and I'm quite happy to see if you manage to do different plans. And what I want you to do now is basically just keep all these objectives like you put them here the same. So some of you probably have find some really good combinations. Others have tried something like I did now in principle and failed, um, but still try to choose the same objectives and or before you do this, but do not forget to save your plan. Like here, I call it prostate dose IMRT. And uh, you can also save the DVH by, um, oops, the chat is coming up again. Okay. You can also save the DVH here. It's quite small, so I probably should make it bigger. So when saving, um, like this, and that you just, with the same objectives, really quickly create another proton plan. So I will choose a very simple beam setup. We have heard before that you could use the box setup with four beams. Um, I will choose a very simple two beam setup. So basically looking at the beams, I will just come from opposite directions, left and right. You can, if you want to, you can try to add the zero degree and 180 degree angle if you want to. Um, but um, I will really just try this, um, switch the mode to proton and just do everything again. Just click through it and see what happens for the setup. If I get like also a very, very weird looking plan or if it looks at least a little bit better with the protons. Uh, Nicholas, uh, then uh, mm -hmm. we should uh, wrap it up and uh, give yes, yes. time to the people, to participants, to upload the results because at uh, six thirty we yes. will uh, start the discussion. The yeah. Yes, it's the last thing. It's just for getting like this result and compare if it is easier for you to get a better result. Um, um, or if it is, um, if the plan is even worse. <laughs> 
What's also there to see that if you add constraints, the optimization usually becomes slower and the objective function values do a little bit more jumping around. Um, the reason for this is that basically now the optimizer um, is not focused always on minimizing the objective, but at the same time, it's focused on getting your solution towards the constraints. Um, so basically, um, in the objective function, you then see this jumps in the in my photon optimization before it was even more visible. So that was the photon thing. So it jumped around until basically it found points close to the constraints and then focused on really minimizing the objective. But you see this quite a lot. It usually takes longer um, and, and uh, make it like this. And you see, I have really chosen the same settings. I've chosen the same settings and for the proton, since it has not that much of an of an issue with basically um, um, normal tissue dose, everything looks much better. I mean, there's like really a qualitative statement right now, but we also can check out the DVH here. And you see also the DVH looks really nice, um, um, especially here, um, um, given the, the, um, the, um, the bladder and rectum have really low doses because I never really bother to shoot through them like I do with the photons. So they have really low doses. Um, there's basically almost no problem in, in covering these values. My prescriptions, prescriptions look quite good. Again, you have this issue that the constraints really just pull it up to this value, but they don't care about this region at all. Um, so that's also something interesting. I didn't really focus on the femoral heads, which you see, um, which you see um, here. So they really do not completely adhere to the to the um, to the prescriptions. But you see, the photon world um, um, is 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 really a little a lot more. Um, 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 basically easy to handle these trade-offs sometimes. But this is only if you discard all these additional things like uncertainties, of course. Um, but in this optimal setting, it really is um, often much easier to handle the normal tissue sparing um, um, with respect to target coverage. And I think that's what we want to see in this session that basically protons make a lot of things in this trade-offs apparently easier than in the photon world. I see that for some of you, this problem was a little bit large, especially when you add constraints, this might make it quite hard on you, your computer. Um, so um, maybe, like this. Uh, maybe um, if you have problems, I'm, I'm sorry for that. Um, but um, I hope you have some results. You don't, if, if something didn't work, I think that's not an, an, an issue to show results. It's uh, to, to to basically say uh, you did not participate or something. I think that may just happen. As I said, the treatment planning problem is really a kind of a big problem. It, 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 um, it, it takes a lot of computational power. So if you have like only the photon results now or, or only proton results or something like this, I don't think that this is too bad. With all the questions and so on in between, um, it also took a little longer than I thought. So um, we can also make a recap in the in the um, uh, in the session tomorrow. But for now, I would say we wrap it up and um, hope you got like some feeling of how the really basic, not the state of the art treatment planning, but the basic um, photon and proton treatment planning works. Um, we will get into the specialities, let's say, in the. Uh, that's just the tip of the, the iceberg, let's say, but we get um, to look in the special issues of proton and, and carbon treatment planning within the next sessions. Um, um, yes, but like about when the results should be uploaded and so on, I leave that to, to Yota to tell you. And uh, if you have these results, save them, um, put them in this thing and upload it when Yota says, I will also save them and... Uh, you can start uploading now if you are ready. If you are not ready today, you can upload tomorrow. The Google Drive is there and we have uh, afternoon uh, sessions to discuss results 
and actually it might be better tomorrow to go into this kind of discussions deeper. The convener of the afternoon sessions will be Niklas and you have some time to prepare it. Yes, yeah, so I'm just save my results as well. So just doing it so you don't forget it. Um, then I will stop screen sharing. And regarding what you upload, it, it really doesn't have to be a report or something. Um, um, I think it should just document that you that you um, that you created some results, and and some of the images. Um, maybe just write like a headline. This is results for task one. This is result for the second for the protons only, and that's for the prostate case or something like that. So just that. Um, Yeah, I would put everything into one document. I think um, Jota said the the file names, right? That the, the file names are somewhere. Um... The file names is practically a combination of the of your names, so that we can identify yeah. whose file it is. Okay. I have to leave now. I will be back later, but I have a meeting now. So Perfect. Thank um, you very much, uh, Niklas. Thanks a lot.